Uh, I, don't, I shouldn't do my Yoda. Use the force, you must. All right, I'm getting good at this. It says microphone. If my wife was here, she'd be pissed at me right now. She's still sleeping. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome. Video Boss, I love that title. Uh, Robert Castillo, thank you, thank you for having me. Uh, let's give it up for Vito again, come on. That took a lot, a lot of courage, come up. Amy was amazing, I was like, oh my God, uh, how am I gonna top this? <laughs> what am I gonna do? I don't have all this music. Amy had all this cool music. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I should have had cool music in there or something. Anyway, good morning, my God, I'm not even up this early most of the time, gosh. Um, anyway, but yeah, Karen, I just, I wanna publicly thank Karen for helping me get a house. I'm a homeowner, yes! It's been so many years, my God, I thought it was like an impossible thing to own a home. All right, so I am here to teach you storyboarding for video production. I thought about that title for a while. What this could be a good title here? Um, and I just wanna let you all in on a little secret about Hollywood. I work with many Hollywood people, directors. Uh, I just worked with Lee Daniels a few months ago on a Netflix horror film that's coming out. I think it's called The Deliverance. You guys will see that on Netflix. Let me just say, I wanna give you a little, a little secret about Hollywood. A lot of these Hollywood people don't know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. They act like they know what they're doing, right? They, they get people like me. They get all these talented people <laughs> behind them. And then and they, go to the, they go to the cool party. So we do all the work and we do all the drawings and the pre-planning. And then they go to, to all the great parties. That's how it is, you know? But you know what? It's, it's fine. I'll stay home. I'm married. I'm happy. I'll stay home. Uh, I'm a professor now. I have students that I teach. So I don't mind that, all right? Um, but anyway, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Um, so a little bit of a story. I've been drawing since I was a little kid. Um, a little bit about me here. About me. I love superheroes. That's why I drew Karen as a superhero. <laughs> I've done storyboards for movies, TV shows for 20 years. When I say that, I'm like, God, I'm getting old. Look how young I was there. My God. Some people are like, you still look the same, you're a vampire. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 20 years. Uh, so when I was a little kid, I remember messing up my grandmother's and my uncle's uh, house in the Dominican Republic. Uh, it's beautiful there if anybody wants to go, Santo Domingo. Uh, beautiful, beautiful weather. We're not that far from there, actually, <laughs> here in Florida. Um, I'm an avid toy collector. My, my marriage is on the rocks, everybody, <laughs> right? Big Star Wars fan as, you know, because of the music, right? This is my office. This is my office. Yes, I am, I gotta stop. <laughs> Karen, you get to see my, this is what I did with the house that I bought. <laughs> this is the second floor, this is what I did. This is what I did. My wife is like, you got enough toys? Uh, actually, no, I pre-ordered some more. <laughs> This is, this, is, this is my room, but you gotta come, Karen. You gotta come with a video camera. Um, a lot of kids love it, kids, kids love it. So yeah, so this is my office, I love toys, but I'm not ashamed, you know, this is what I love. It's movies, it's connected, it's all about storytelling, right? Um, here's some of my work, all right? So Captain Marvel, for Marvel, um, good movie. I had a week to do these drawings. No stress, right? Yeah, we need you for a week. We're gonna pay you this much. They pay well. It's, uh, I think you can make 700 to $800 a day doing storyboards. It's really great. Um, the Sopranos, a little show called The Sopranos, right? Um, as you can, the way you, you can see my accent, I'm from up there, from Jersey. I remember getting off the plane uh, when I came to Savannah, uh, when Scad was, was uh, interviewing me, and the guy said, are you a Yankee? I'm like, I don't play baseball. <laughs> I am Dominican, and there's a lot of Dominicans from my country that play baseball, but I'm not a Yankee. I, don't, I didn't know what he was saying, and then I realized somebody said, no, that's what they call people from up there. <laughs> All right, I was like, okay. Um, here's some more uh, Captain Marvel stuff. WandaVision on Disney Plus. Um, this was a long time ago. It's amazing because a lot of these jobs that I do, I do them many, many years before they 
they, they filmed them because, again, Hollywood doesn't know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> you know, so they're like, we need to figure this out. We don't know if it's going to work. We have this idea, you know, uh, let's go in the comic books and take everything out of there because we can't have an original idea. That's what they do. Okay. I hope there's no Hollywood people here. I won't work in the industry. Black Lightning, another, another uh, show. Ant-Man, that was great. Thank you. Yeah, good movie. I don't know about the last one. I'm sorry. I didn't work on that. So I didn't work on that one. They should have called me. They didn't call me. All right, here's some more stuff here. A baseball movie on the right. I actually got fired from that job. It was my first animated film that I worked on. And I was on for two months. And I remember I was trying to get help from people. And uh, some of the artists, they had some Disney artists there. And two months later, I got fired because I didn't know what I was doing. Right. But the little message in that is it's OK not to know what you're doing, <laughs> because that's how it starts. That's how you get better. I tell my students uh, and they freak out. I go, I, I, I hope you all fail. And they're like, why? Why do you say such a bad thing? Because that's how you grow and that's that's how you learn, you know, and a lot. And, and the three words, the, the most important three words, um, I think I remember reading about Steven Spielberg. He said the three most impo important words were I don't know. He didn't know a lot, so he tried and, and, and failed with Jaws. You know, Jaws was a disaster, but what he could put together um, became a masterpiece. You see what I'm saying? So, um, and, that's, and that's the message that I want people to get, that, you know, you just have to take a, a leap of faith and try. Um, uh, Amy was a great example up here with the videos that she had, you know. Um, here's another Chris Rock movie, um, top five, uh, and I won a student Oscar. I don't know how the hell that happened. I have no idea, I swear, I had no idea what I was doing, I swear. It was 2004, I, was, I had to graduate from the School of Visual Arts, right? And I got this idea, I was like, okay, I was doing 3D animation, it was very hard, I'm like, I don't understand these coding and all this. And I got this idea, what if I put a camera behind me and draw, because I draw very fast, I draw, you know, sometimes I don't even, I make mistakes, but I fix it while I'm drawing, and I could tell stories about my life, and I did that to graduate, and somebody said, hey, won't you, uh, you know, send it into the student Oscars? And then I ended up winning the regional for New York. I ended up winning. And I said, oh, that's how, that's how far it'll go. That's fine. I think I won like 200 bucks or something. That's fine. I got a little certificate. But then that night, I remember that week, they were like, OK, we're going to call the winners that are going to go to California. And I ended up going to California. I, I, I went all the way. And that Sunday, I, I won gold. I won first place. I beat out a film. Thank you. That cost like. $10,000. But again, this, the story is there. I didn't know what I was doing, but I did it from my heart. You see how powerful we are. We, we, we can, if we have an idea, we just got to take that leap of faith, and, and <laughs> which is going to lead me into this, pre, into this presentation because some people are like, I don't, I don't know how to really draw, but we're going to get there. <laughs> I don't draw, but it's okay. If you can sign your name, you can draw, okay? <laughs> Because um, I'm showing you all these beautiful pictures, and you're like, okay, uh, what's going on here, right? So you just got to take that leap of faith. Anyway, um, what are storyboards? All right, what are storyboards? Um, a storyboard is a sequence of pictures that show important parts of a story in the order they happen. It's like a comic book version of your story that you can use to help you plan and create your final product, whether that's a movie, animation, or a book. So it's, it's, it's a great device that you can use for, for your videos, uh, you, your pre-production, your pre-planning, your ideas that you have, you know? Um, and here's some examples. I, I put these examples together. There's Forrest Gump, <laughs> Ali, right? And you can see the drawings, very detailed drawings. There's Ali, and there's Ma Malin Rouge. Right? No Country for Old Man. Look at that sketch. It's very close to the shot. Parasite. The whole movie was storyboarded. Parasite. The guy drew the whole movie out, went to Hollywood. They were like, okay, we'll give you the money. 
George Lucas did the same thing with Star Wars. He had the whole movie storyboarded out. So it's a great way to sell your idea. You know, like if you have an idea for a video and you're trying to get other people to back your idea, get it sketched out, draw out, and plan it, right? Um, and it's a powerful, powerful thing. You know, it's a powerful tool to use. A little history. Let's give you a little history of storyboards. Storyboards started at Walt Disney Studios in the 1930s. Um, and it started with uh, black and white cartoons that they would show in theaters before movies, like, uh, you know, Silly Symphonies or Plain Crazy um, uh, Mickey Mouse, right? Uh, let me give you a little quick, like, I, I always, when I teach at SCAD, I throw little facts out. Does anybody know uh, Mickey, what Mickey Mouse was before he was a mouse? What kind of cartoon he was? Rabbit. Yes, you got it, yes. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. That was, that was Mickey Mouse before he became Mickey Mouse. So it was Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. And what happened was uh, Walt Disney got into a situation with a distributor and he, they ended up stealing his idea. So the story goes, I don't know if this is true, he was on a train coming home and it was late at night and he saw a little mouse on the train. What was the mouse doing on the train? A little mouse came out and he got the idea for Mickey Mouse and it was born. But Mickey was not Mickey yet, it was Mortimer. That was the name, Mortimer Mouse. So when he came home, he told his wife, <laughs> that's why marriage is great, women are awesome. You women are awesome. Because we have stupid ideas, a lot of us guys. I got it, I'm gonna make a cartoon called Mortimer Mouse. He goes, that's a horrible, horrible name. That's what she said. How about Mickey? And he was like, <laughs> I like that. The rest is history, I like that, Mickey. So yeah, his wife came up with the name Mickey. And Walt did the voice for Mickey Mouse. <laughs> he was the first one to do it. So hey, these facts would come in handy if you go to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, right? You never know. Um, so anyway. <laughs> So movies like Gone with the Wind in 1939, they did storyboards. I tried to find out who did these drawings, but I couldn't find out. So what was terrible back then, it was like a lot of people got hired in the studios and you were contracted with the studio um, and you did your job. You did the drawings for the director. The director got all the credit. It's still going on today, by the way. <laughs> they get all the credit, um, you know, so at least your name is at the end of a movie now. Sometimes, sometimes I get credited. Uh, but movies like Citizen Kane by Orson Welles took advantage of doing storyboards, right? 1941. Psycho. Um, Saul Bass, I, I found the name, finally. He did a lot of logos and poster design. So Saul Bass uh, did the storyboards. But if you look at these drawings and you look at the movie Psycho, right? Um, you know, together, like it's shot per shot, you know? Really, and sometimes when I work in, in jobs, I look at it and they go, wait a second, wow, they, they did every shot that I drew, it's amazing. A lot of times they don't, sometimes they do, you know? Um, so yeah, so it, it's, it's an amazing thing. Here's the birds, right? Shot for shot, right? So Alfred Hitchcock loved storyboards. He was like, if the storyboards work, and if the storyboards were like making sense, then you know, the movie was done, basically, that's what he said. So he just got the camera all set and then shot the movie. So, but it's a, it's a powerful, it's a powerful tool, powerful tool. All right, so how do we start? How do we start? How do we start doing storyboards? You need a shot list. <laughs> and you can make this any kind of way you want, right? This shot list can be anything. It could be you writing down, you know, on a, on a, on a pad, you know, uh, a notebook or something, shots that you're thinking about, right? Pre-plan, think about it. Like, okay, I wanna start with uh, a drone shot or something of this house that I wanna sell, and then I wanna push into the door. You're, you're telling a story. It's all about storytelling, really. If you look, look around, you watch movies, you watch TikTok, you watch YouTube, it's all about an emotional response, and that's the same thing that Hollywood is doing to us. They're playing with our, emo our emotions. That's how, what we are as storytellers. We're playing with emotions, right? We see movies, you see that shot when they fall in love and they hug and they, they kiss, you know? And you push in and you pull out or whatever with the, with the camera. So a shot list, you wanna do a shot list. Very important, right? Here's a, 
another shot list, right? A little messy, but it doesn't matter because this is you. You're the production. You're the director for your videos. You know what I mean? No one has to see this stuff, <laughs> you know? Um, so, because I talk to people, they say, oh, it's embarrassing. I can't really draw a straight line. It's for you. This is your, um, your production, your ideas. So you put them down. For example, you know, you have a shot. MCU means medium close-up, right? Medium close-up, right? Um, and it says uh, Steve is blah, 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 whatever. So what you're doing is you're describing in these shots what's going to happen. You know, what are you going to do with the camera, right? So, um, so that you don't grab a camera and kind of like by accident, Things don't happen by accident, you know, especially with movies. Everything is pre, pre, you know, pre-designed. Everything is worked out because of two things, time and money. <laughs> they really want to hold on to their money and, and spend it wisely. So time and money uh, with movies. And that's, what they, that's why they did storyboards at Disney. You know, they tried to um, sketch everything out and see if, it, if the animation would work. So you can do the same thing by trying to visualize and think of the shots that you want to show as a record for yourself, you know? And then you're going to need a template. Very important. As you can see in the box, right? Right there, this is where the image goes. The action, you have action, you have dialogue. Okay, so video on the top, what is it? It's, uh, you know, selling my first home, right? Scene. Uh, outside uh, the, the house that I'm selling, right? Shot, shot one, two, or three. Those are your shots, right? Action, what do you want to do? do you, in, in that action, you can write, uh, I'm going to push in the camera slowly to the door, right? In the dialogue, maybe you're narrating. So that is where you, you put that down. You write down maybe narration. FX, maybe there's some sparkle that you're using. I don't know, like on TikTok, there's all these effects, and that's what effects is, right? So I kind of like <laughs> did this really quickly for you. Um, you can draw here. There's me waving. <laughs> so there I am. Number your shots. Remember to number your shots. There's me waving. Oh, my God, that almost looks like what I drew there. I didn't <laughs> um, there's me waving. Slowly push in with camera is the action. Me H hello, folks, right? <laughs> Dialogue, hello, folks. And then ambient light in background. I think there's ambient light. Oh, my God, I, I feel like a psychic. <laughs> I mean, I did this days ago. That's so weird, right? So, yeah, so this breaks it down for you, right? And the arrows that I got there, those arrows indicate, um, you know, pushing in. It indicates movement, right? If you do an arrow from left to right, that could be a pan or a track, uh, we're in film school now, and this is here's here's the best way I could describe I could describe panning and tracking, right? Tracking, make believe I'm the camera. Tracking, <laughs> yeah, I'm tracking. I'm the camera. I'm on tracks and I'm tracking. Panning is the camera is still and we're doing this. Okay, remember that. That's how I teach my students because they're like panning and tracking. It's almost the same. It's similar, so you don't get confused, right? So yeah, so you need a template. A template is important, right? Don't forget to number your shot. I tell this to my students all the time. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> they forget to number their shots. And I was like, what's going on here, you know? Right? So we got 1A, 1B, 1C. It's re really a progression <laughs> of somebody walking. 1A, 1B, 1C. Right? So number your shots. Your shots numbered are very important. So here's some more examples, right? Add words at the bottom to give more context to your panels, right? So here we have a wide shot of both Sarah and Ca Callum illustrating where they are and what the film is about, right? So again, you draw there what situation is happening, what scene is happening, right? What is happening? Maybe the next shot right here is a close-up. You can see on number two, there's a close-up of Sarah, and Sarah is talking. So. It's a great way to pre-visualize what you're going to show. It saves a lot of time because a lot of times when people grab a camera, they're like, oh, let me try this. Let me try that. And they're like, I don't even know what to use here. So, and, you know, it just saves you a lot of time. And, and you, can, you can take your time and you can uh, plan all the shots that you want. 
And then comes the editing and, and things like that and, you know, thinking about that. But it's a, this is what Hollywood does. I mean, I think every movie does this. If a movie doesn't do this, then they're in trouble because uh, somebody wants to see some kind of storyboard, some kind of um, pre-planning, right? Here's some more examples, right? As you can see, you see the arrow there. That's like a camera move. You can do a, a camera move like that by drawing the arrow, right? Pan the camera moves horizontally, right? There's a medium shot of two people, right? Close-ups. So yeah, so it's a great, great, great um, way to pre-visualize. All right, here we are at aspect ratios. Very important, right? Um, doesn't matter because you know you're doing this for you. 4.3, 16.9. I think I usually work in 16.9 or 1.8.5.1, as you can see those aspect ratios. But whatever aspect ratio you want to work on, it doesn't matter. You know, I think 4.3 is like back in the 70s, 80s, probably late 90s television. You know, now we have widescreen and things like that, right? Basic shots. I wanted to talk about some basic shots, right? These are basic shots that anybody can learn easily, right? Extreme long shot. You got a long shot there. Medium shot. Mid shot, medium close up. Close up, big close up, and extreme close up. So close ups, a lot of close ups, right, are used for emotional purposes, for like surprise, or you know, maybe someone's sad or something like that. But you know, that's what, that's what they're used for, you know? A lot of times um, I tell my students, look, if you're trying to show me a new place, like let's say I'm doing a video and I, I'm, gonna, I'm selling a home, right? And I, why not maybe get a nice wide shot of the street, you know? Um, wide shot or, you know, a shot of the neighborhood before you get to the house. So in a way they do that in movies. So what, what, they, what they do, the, the reason they do that in movies is to establish. They call that an establishing shot. So they do it in movies. Like if you're watching a superhero movie or you see the Avengers, they show New York and then they show the building and then you're inside. You know what I'm saying? So think about that. Think about introducing the audience to where we're at. Where are we? Maybe beautiful beaches. Find the, find the best that, that that neighborhood or that place has to offer and, and show it, and then that leads up to the house. Build it up instead of, you know, I've seen videos online where it's like the house and then inside and then that's it. It's kind of boring, you know? Give us a little story. Show us, put some beautiful music to it. Show the neighborhood. Show maybe it could be a drone shot or something. Show the neighborhood, then build it up and show, show the house, right? Think about, think about that. So shots are important, the shots that you choose are very important, right? Here's some more secrets. I'm giving all the secrets today. I'm gonna get arrested by Hollywood police after this. They're like, hey man, you're demystifying it. All right, the rule of thirds in filmmaking. Here are some examples. Hollywood is doing this to you people. <laughs> um, and a lot of people don't realize it. As you can see, the sweet spots. Ooh, I love, oh my God, look at this. I'm playing with this thing now. See the little sweet spot? One, two, three, four. The sweet spots right there in the rule of third. You wanna, you wanna think about that. Like, you know, if you wanna bring some production value and some um, beautiful, like, compositions to your shots, think about the rule of third. Very easy. There's actually programs and, and apps you can download for your camera that I've seen that shows you the rule of thirds that show you, shows you these, these grids. And, you know, but think about that. Think about your shots, composing your shots, right? Right around here. So anywhere around there where you compose or put anything there, that's the strongest areas for that, right? Here we go with rear window um, off for Hitchcock. You can see it. You can see the rule of third. See that right there? So those are the little sweet spots there. And we have, here we have her right down the line and we have him right down the line. So those are things you can, you can learn these things. You know, I, I would encourage you to go on YouTube and look up film language or, or shots, you know, 
and things like that. And, and educate yourself. Why not? The more you know, the better videos you will make. And it will bring that production value. Any, anybody could learn those things, you know? Um, you don't have to be an expert in movies. Um, but if you take some of these things with you, it's, it's just going to help you, you know? Um, here's some more, some more secrets. Um, foreground, middle ground, and background. I, I say this all the time to my students when they compose pictures. They do it in photography. Um, you can see it here in this painting. You got foreground, middle ground, and background. Um, and even this beautiful picture here, and even here with the blur here, right? Foreground, middle ground, and background, very important. Here's some examples. Right? I love that you can go to any screen. This is awesome. I wish I, my classroom was like this. Here we go. You see foreground. You got this guy here, middle ground, and then the background. These two characters, foreground, middle ground, and background. Think of that. You know, think about that. Um, and again, your drawings don't have to be perfect. You know, just think of composing shots like that. If you're, if you're aware of these things, you're going to get amazing videos. And they're, they're, gonna be, they're gonna be noticed by people like, wow, the value to this is amazing. I think I'm gonna put out a lot of video people out of a job after today. I'm, I'm just thinking in my mind, my God, I'm giving away all these secrets. Video people are gonna kill, they're gonna hate me. He gave the secrets away. They don't need us anymore. <laughs> it's a revolution. Um, really, if you think about it, I think we're all living in scary times, right? but amazing, amazing techno technological times, right? You literally can use AI to write something for you. You can do your storyboards. You can buy a camera and do it all yourself. Like, who needs the big studios, <laughs> right? I'm gonna be out of a job. Anyway, foreground, middle ground, background. Remember that, FMB, foreground, middle ground, background. Um, here's some more examples of movies. A every movie does it, right? I think that's apocalypse now. You got the foreground element, middle ground, and then the background there. Citizen Kane, foreground, middle ground, background. Uh, I forget this animated film. Inside I don't know. Out. Inside Out, thank you, of course. Yes, a fan, Pixar. Inside Out, foreground, middle ground, background. 10 points for you. I feel like you're in my, my class. Foreground, middle ground, background, but there's a nice triangle thing going on there, you know? Nice composition, brings us in. You know, it's not by accident. It's not by accident, you know. Um, here's some more examples, right? For like homes, right? Foreground, middle ground, and background. Beautiful, they're composed beautifully. It's not by accident. You know, some people are like, oh my God, that's a beautiful picture, you got lucky. No, we know what we're doing here. <laughs> Didn't get lucky, okay? <laughs> Went to school for this. I paid much, much money. <laughs> um, yes. And the rule of thirds. So you can, you can combine foreground, middle ground, and background. Um, oops, let me go back here. Oh, I went back too far. My goodness. There we go. You can combine foreground, middle ground, and background uh, with the rule of third. There you go. Right? Awesome. Um, so you can get amazing shots. All right, so now we get to the good part. You're probably telling yourself, I can't draw, are you crazy? What am I gonna, do? I don't draw. I get that a lot. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. This is Martin Scorsese's drawings. One of the best directors in the history of cinema for Taxi Driver. It looks like a two year old did it. <laughs> I, hope, I hope no one knows Martin Scorsese here. But it doesn't matter because, you know, it's a great film. I mean, I think it was nominated for an Oscar. It, it doesn't matter because these are notes and these are drawings for the director. He's trying to tell a story visually. It doesn't matter. He's trying to think. He's thinking about it. That little square right there could be a push in. I think it is. You see the arrow. He wants to push in to that shot. All that blood. Oh, my God. Yes, that was in the movie. <laughs> um, but yeah, as you can see, it doesn't matter. Knives Out, look at this storyboard for Knives Out. Anybody see the movie Knives Out? Yeah. I love it when I get this. When I, yeah. when I work with a director and he gives me this, woo, I'm happy. It's easy, all I gotta do is make it look real. I, you know, I use my wife to pose and everything, and I use her. And when I get that, I understand exactly what they want. 
So this little drawing right here, you know, it says so much in this little sketch. And I know a lot of you here can draw this. <laughs> I know it. I feel it. Yes. Here we go. I was so excited when I found this. This is Steven Spielberg, the greatest of the greats, right, of directors. Look at that. Steven Spielberg. And this is for a, the color purple. But look at that. He did these drawings for himself, right? Little notes and stuff, you know, of what's going to happen. I think this was like a ritual in the movie, 1982. So if they want to beautify these drawings, they hire people like me. They, they call people like me in. They say, hey, you know, I got these sketches. I want them beautified. You know how to draw. You've been drawing a long time. We need this cleaned up so that everybody knows what we're talking about. But you can do it for yourself. Look at that. You can start with, I love this little basketball game going on here. <laughs> you can start with stick figures. He's pissed. He's upset. Oh, he just, oh my, the violence. <laughs> what? I didn't get that far in this little animation. You can start with stick figures. Start with stick figures for your storyboards. Check it out. Circle and square. Circle plus square plus dots plus lines equals people. Look at that, that's a person. I saw somebody like that down in Savannah walking around. No. <laughs> that's a person. And if you, add, if you add little things like a few tweaks, like clothes and hair, it's different people. So you can do it. <laughs> I believe in you, right? Or you could do other things like this that represent people, right? Star, not even a body there. Whatever you want. It's for you. You're doing this to help you, right? You want to draw a crowd? There you go. <laughs> Squiggly lines and you have a crowd, you know? It's very, very simple. And you can indicate motion with arrows. See that? Zoom in. We're zooming in, right, with that arrow. And then, you know, the character is running from left to right. So you can always do that with, with arrows, right? So let's put it to practice. Let's say that I'm putting together a video, right? So here's my storyboards on the left. I love doing this. Here's my storyboards on the left and then the video on the right. So I want to do like a drone shot of this wonderful house here in, it looks like Florida, here in Florida, <laughs> right? And that's the motion that I want. So by doing it there, you know, I drew it. I, it was, you know what's crazy? It was hard to draw really simple. <laughs> it was so hard for me. It's so weird because I'm so used to like fixing and, and drawing all my life. It was so hard to go back and make it as simple as I can. So look, if you do a little tree, a little pool, you know that's the house. The pan, the camera is panning, right? Pan the camera and that's happening there with your video, right? Shot two is you talking to the camera. Not while you're driving, please. <laughs> talking to the camera and you're stop. You're like, hey, I'm gonna show you this wonderful house Blah, blah, blah. You can draw a little stick figure in there, shot from inside the car, talking to camera, right? Shot number three is a push in on this beautiful, it looks like a three to five million dollar mansion. Uh, push in to the front of the house, right there, right? And that's it, that's it. That's it with the storyboards, right? But here's another thing I got so excited when I thought, I was like, okay, maybe I should show this also because directors have, have given me this for storyboards. You can do a layout of your space and mark where your camera is gonna be or what's gonna happen. For example, right, if your camera's here or maybe your camera's going down the stairs or whatever, so you can actually plan out your room and draw little cameras around that room of what you're gonna do. So you're, again, you're still doing storyboards in a way. Sometimes I get this, from directors and it really helps me, it helps me see what the space is, you know, or sometimes I get like a 3D model, but you know, if there is no 3D model yet, I get something like this and I can kind of visualize. So this could also help you out a lot. It could help you out well. Here's a cleaner version. If you can get, uh, you know, schematic or, uh, you know, a plan for, of a house, or the house that you're shooting on, you can write on top of it. Put your camera shots and write your movements. You may, you know, maybe you have someone walking this way, cameras all around, 
And you could write your scene, bedroom, right? Daylight, whatever, second setup, shots, camera. You know, what are, what are the cameras doing? What shots are there? You can write that down and, and plan it out. Very simple. Anybody could do this. It really saves you time, right? Um, I'm excited about this. Animatics, animatics. A lot, of, a lot of movies do this. So basically, with animatics, you're taking your drawings, right? Maybe scanning them, your JPEGs, and you're dropping them, right, in a video editing uh, program, right? Like iMovie or anything. And you could literally have drawings of, of the shots and what you want them to do. So maybe, you know, you, put, you drop JPEG by JPEG of your drawings. Um, maybe you add some music here and you do an animatic, a pre-production of what you want to show, what you're going to videotape, right? Because, again, it's like a great way to see what you're going to do before you do it. So it's a pre-visual thing, pre-visual situation, right? Um, here's another little, I, I just thought I'd throw this in there. One of my students did this. He did a little animatic. It's like, mm, he got the refrigerator tied up there. So, you know, a lot of my students love doing it before they do animation. Um, here's another animatic. So yeah, it's a really powerful thing. You could drop little drawings in there. Don't worry about how detailed it is. They don't have to be super detailed. Your drawings don't have to be super detailed. Your drawings can be simple, um, where you can drop them in, time it out, you know, what's, what's going to happen with the camera or what shot is it, and it's really going to help you out. Um, so remember, I wanted to talk about this. Remember, story is everything, right? So when you're doing your videos, when you're doing your storyboards, um, try to tell a story with your videos, you know, because we're living in the age now where um, with social media, with YouTube, with TikTok, a lot of stuff that captures people's attention deal with the human connection. You see what I'm saying? Uh, things that people care about. Um, so remember, story is everything. They, they do it for movies. They do it for animation. Um, Thank you. I got a few minutes, but thank you. Here I am. Thank you for having me. If you want to contact me. Yeah, I'll do some Q&A. And I just wanted to say this QR code. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you to uh, Austin. Katie Ruddy, thank you for your help. I've been, I've been in contact with them over the weeks. They got this for you. So basically, if you, if you do this QR code, I have a cheat sheet, I call it cheat sheet, of shots, what they mean. I also have a template for you, for storyboards. Um, and what else? Oh, recommended books and movies. <laughs> We're in school, baby. <laughs> I'm still a professor. So I got a sheet with recommended books and movies. I got a sheet with uh, shots and what they mean, like ECU, extreme close-up, right? I had to condense film school in three pages. And a template that you could, you know, you could print out and you can, you can make copies of it, but also you could get it online. If you look up storyboard templates, there's a lot of templates. You can right click and save it. Don't buy it unless you want to. Amazon sells a book that says storyboard templates where you can draw. If you want to buy the book, buy the book. And it's empty and you could draw, you know, draw in the boxes and things like that. Uh, but yeah, but check this out. Click on this thing. I got six minutes for q and I'm so happy. Anybody have any? I hope people have questions. Anybody have any questions about anything? With story I, I got yes. a question. Oh, yes, I, yes. I, I just ran to the microphone. Okay. I hope that's okay. Um, when you're doing rule of thirds, but you're shooting vertical for Instagram or another You platform. could still do it. You could yeah. still do it. Is, yes. is there, but it's narrower? Is there any yeah. kind of take it's or just, feel It's on just that? high. It's still right there in the middle. You could still do that. It's like you could take that wide shot and go this way now. So just still draw your tic-tac-toe yep. exactly. but just do it yeah. there. It's okay. like taking the wide shot with the, with the ruler third and then flipping it. Because I had to do storyboards for a viral campaign one time, and they had me work on that, that template size. And it's still the same. You're still dealing with foreground, middle ground, and background, just like a wide shot. That's a great question, yes. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Yes. I think, did you have a question? I, no? Yeah? No? Oh, yeah. oh. Okay. Yes. So, um, most of our YouTube videos, or mine anyways, are sort of, you know, how-tos or the top tens or the yeah. you know, things like that. Yeah. How can, I'm trying to think like how to weave a story into that because it is okay. mostly, that's what a, are the top 10 suburbs? Well, that's a good question. Maybe your intro could be interesting or how you set up how your, you know, because a lot of times we're like talking to talking, you see talking heads in the videos. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's set up in a way where you're sitting a certain way, lit a certain way, um, you know, and you have, I don't know, like that's a, that's a good question, but I think it's probably the intro because then you're going into videos and things like that. Mm -hmm. So maybe... Maybe your, your intro or your outro could be planned out. That's what I think. So it, it's weird because we live in a world where not all your videos are going to need a lot of storyboarding. I think it's more like almost like documentaries. Documentaries, believe it or not, are also doing video, uh, storyboards. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you want to introduce a story or a house or something. You want to show it a certain way. And your shots are interesting, but a lot of people don't even think about it. Yeah. But yeah, I would say with that, it's like intro maybe or outro and things like that. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Yes. Um, I had a quick question, Lorena Saunders from Atlanta. Yes. Um, nowadays, I see a lot of agents when they're shooting home tours, yes. they're starting from drones. Now, how can you use the... Um, different angle storyboard going from maybe like a ground level or something before okay. you get to the house? Yeah, I mean, you could literally do a storyboard where you have a drone, like maybe that's... If you don't have a drone. Oh, if you don't have a You're drone. Right. Okay, so maybe, okay, here's, and let's say you don't have a budget, like a big budget or a lot of money, right? So let's say this is what I would do, right? If I had a house and I wanted to move in, I've seen a lot of filmmakers like Robert Rodriguez and all these other great directors who started out with their careers where he would sit in a, in a um, shopping cart with the camera and then slowly pushed in that sh shopping cart to get this beautiful shot. You know what I'm saying? And then um, also um, just framing things a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Um, so if you don't have a drone, you could come up with creative ways to kind of move the camera in by that way. Maybe being pushed by a shopping cart. Maybe you, you know, maybe um, you have like a low shot and you put it on a skateboard and then move that really slow. Or you put it on a table. Let's say you want to get the kitchen. Maybe you get one of these things that spin around and put the camera there and spin it slowly around the kitchen. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I should do these videos. <laughs> slowly around the kitchen and get a sense of the space. But you, you're thinking outside the box. Well, how can I show and keep it interesting instead of static? Static is dead, you know? Mm -hmm. Movement is life, like okay. they say. So it's like if you're moving slowly, you're getting, and then you're putting the music to it. Yeah. So that's what I would say, like, think outside the box. Kind of like my short film when I, you know, when I did that, I was trying to say, hey, why can't I draw and narrate to that. And now everybody's doing it. God, I should have copyrighted. Not, why can't I draw and narrate to that? So it's like, think of ways to do that for motion, maybe something that spins. Experiment on your own and say, you know what? I, this really works. I'm going to do this for my videos. Okay. That's thank what I you. would say. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 34 seconds. I feel good. I did it. Yes. Hey, Robert. I'm uh, Michael Sanders. Nice Michael Sanders from Raleigh. Probably realtor, all your referrals. Awesome. Um, quick question. Um, yeah. Is there an automated program to do what you're talking about, like storyboarding? Is there, is there a way to simplify it where, you know, you can make it fast? I mean, I don't know about everybody else in here at those videos, yeah. but I barely have time to even think or breathe about even starting when I do a video. I do one a week, and it's like, oh, my God, that's all I do. Yeah. Um, is there a way to make it easier, quicker, faster, like from, a, from a storyboarding perspective? There are, there are like programs at the top of my head. I can't think of a name, but I've seen little programs where you have like little 3D models and you literally could do all your moves and kind of see like what you're going to shoot. Um, so that's, you know, you could use programs like that. I know there's a program called Storyboarder, B-O-A-R-D-E-R, -E where you could kind of jot down, digitally draw on it and make like a little animatic really quick. 
it's all built in so you don't have to like scan things in and things like that. So in this, this, I'm sure there's like apps that I've seen, you know, um, but sometimes I feel like the fastest way is still your brain, like you jotting things down. But if you, if you want to take it further and use these little programs, they do have programs where you can have like a little model and kind of see movement, you know, like move the camera or, or, you know, but the thing is most people don't also want to, you know, use the programs. A lot of people with computer programs, they can be a little technical with moving things around. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think the easiest way sometimes is just to draw things and get it into like a slideshow of what you want to show, right? Um, or here's one thing I did, I've done before. I've taken my phone and done moves on a toy house or something, right? So I'm thinking like, I have no money. I don't have a program. I'll take, this is what I did this once. I took a box and I made a mock of a house, like a mock-up of a house, right? I, I glued like window drawings on it and everything. And then I put like fake trees, like you could buy toys and uh, toy cars and everything. And then I took my phone and I literally did all my moves with my phone of what I wanted to do on the outside. And then the director was like, that's awesome. You use, you know, everyday objects and I understand what we got to do for video. So sometimes programs, like computer programs to this day, they're still a little complicated. You can use things and build things. And it's, it's more for you, you know, notes for you. Yeah. So good question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Ah, I'm going over. It's red. It's blinking red. Thank you.